my kids think I have um, a nice job to come to Rome for one day to speak about things, Internet of Things, so I'd like to thank you and the organizer for making my job so fun. Um, so I will use slides, but actually I will not... Uh, I have slides, but I will not use them, except the first three or four ones. Um, I will try to give you a sense where at the European Commission we are and we would like to go to in both policy and also in research because we, as you know, we, are, we have sizable funds in the research area to support Internet of Things. Um, in, there are two hot topics in the unit I belong to. It's 5G and formerly I'm responsible for the 5G sector. And then you have the IoT sector. So there is sometimes a kind of competition. But we, I have been told, we have been told that we need to cooperate and at the beginning, I was a bit skeptical, you know, it's natural. And, but I, and so I tried to better understand the area of IoT, and that's how I got converted. Actually, I remember a discussion I had during the establishment of the public-private partnership on 5G, the next generation uh, telecom systems. Um, a meeting we had with where the CTO of Ericsson, Ulf Evaldson, was there, and I asked him, what is IoT for you? Where is the meat? Where is the business? And it took him one second, and he said, IoT, until 2020 about, it's nothing. We, we won't see in our sector a lot of money there. But after 2020, it changes everything. So I tend to believe that large companies are a bit conservative, so it will be before that. But it convinced me that the future of 5G is actually IoT, or IoT is the main use or requirement for 5G. So, there is a lot of synergy between connectivity and IoT. I asked then my colleagues in the IoT sector, show me the market structure. Do you have a nice chart showing them? They showed me this. They said, it's maybe the best we have. You see these bubbles? I said, OK, this seems a bit clumsy. But OK, what is interesting is that the, the biggest sphere is the one, uh, is the sensor. And then the second biggest are the connected, so the IP. Uh, connected objects. And if you see the smartphone business, te traditional telecom business, is the smallest of the bubbles in terms of, of number of devices. Okay, that's maybe a fuzzy market structure, but what, who are your stakeholders? And then they showed me this. I said, this is very complex, you have got a problem here, because if you want to be do policy, you have a fuzzy market structure, you have a scattered sk stakeholder, how do you do? And that's the probably one of the main challenges of the IoT, uh, let's say, boom, is to try to get to economies of scale, critical masses, without having clear in yet interlocutors, clear segmented businesses. So we have tried at the, to understand what are the key challenges. How could we, we don't question the importance of IoT, but how can we, as public service, stimulate the development. So there are a couple of things we think are the key challenges. I think that everybody would agree on that, but we have not been working equally on all of them. If you look at the first one and the third one, the, the technology and the user acceptability, so the policy improvement we can make in the area of privacy or security, I think we have been working quite, quite steadily on that since since my ancestor was only three years older, Gerald Santucci started working in the commission uh, in 2007 8 on, this, on the topic. I think we have worked a lot on the first and the third one. The third one, probably, we have been overtaken. I remember that in these early day years, the privacy issues and IoT were seen as an RFID kind of issues. But since then, I mean, the smartphone invades, or even Facebook, are bigger to some extent, or has big privacy issues. As, as Internet of Things. So all these issues are very important, as many speakers have already said, but probably will be tackled more, may I say, horizontally in the context of a digital society. We, there are many facets, and we don't know yet how policy will eventually shape in this area. There are real issues, but I don't believe, that's maybe a more personal view, that it's an IoT-specific. Uh, IoT is just part of a bigger equation here. The first one, uh, we have worked a lot by funding research, but as you will see in my next slides, we are changing now from pure research to more deployment and more applied, uh, more downstream activities in terms of funding. The rest, we have very little influence on that as a, as a European Commission. The risk of fragmentation is links back with the fragmentation of the, uh, the risk of fragmentation with the, the, the multiplicity of stakeholders, the fact that nobody yet has 
reached economies of scale on a large scale. So there is no iPhone application of the IoT yet. And probably this, and this may be a good sign, could occur first in the industrial sector, as two speakers at least have said, I think, could be in the energy sector or the health before even it reaches uh, big, the, the, the retail market. So, but that's up to the market. We cannot do a lot there. Except if we move to uh, the need to mo moving to deployment, we can help to some extent by financing pilots, smart cities, and so on. And finally, the, the last one is, is not a technological one. I, my, my brother is investment banker, my little brother, for 10 years in New York. We often discuss, you know, technology versus finance. And if you look at Google and others, is it a technology innovation or is it a financial innovation? My brother says, no, Google is it's financial. They, don't, they didn't have great products, they just had an early IPO and the financial firing power to buy anything and everything. So they, they bought market shares, they bought innovators. When something was interesting, woof, from Europe or elsewhere, they just buy them. Um, Facebook, you see, it's also financial. Facebook, they did the contrary, they resisted Google. They were the one to show that you can survive without an IPO very late, because they found a system with the, their, their, their fund, uh, venture capitalists to remunerate, to make millionaires of their employees before going to the IPO. Win-win. Is it again a technology success? So it means, what I mean by that is to express one of my hopes, some would say with frustration, but my hopes that in Europe we can better connect outstanding technological inventions, and IoT is a potential uh, source of that, a current source of that, and the next Google and so on. That's not a, a technology issue, that's more a strategic and a financial and industrial issue. Now, here I will really fly over these five slides. It's just to show you that at the moment, in this research program of the European Union, we see uh, we, we handle or we tackle IoT in many different parts of the, the program. That for the initiated, you will recognize here some research call numbers, but this doesn't really matter. But it goes from microprocessor research to, of course, telecom, wireless connectivity and so on, and also software aspects and so on. The next call is maybe relevant for even small entities, even for startups, because we are going to launch a call for IoT platforms. Now, this will be large projects, like six, eight million of funding, so that will attract established companies and bigger companies. But there is 30% of the money that will have to be spent on startups, uh, up to 30%, but it's our firm intention to, to, to reach that target. So that means that these companies that will receive the money from the EU in the course of 2000, end of 2015, beginning of 2016, they will have called to startups and small companies innovative in this field and they will finance that, they will manage the money for the commission if you want, because this potentially many different companies, but even small uh, individual uh, entrepreneurs can uh, apply. Another thing I would like to flag to you, because we don't have time to enter into details, is the open disruptive initiative of the commission. That's the first time we have designed um, an instrument, as we call it in jargon, but a funding mechanism for SMEs in the ICT area, which is quite light. Uh, you have to be a company, you ca cannot be a pure startup, so you have to be an SME. But if you look at the details here, you, will, you can look at my slides offline. The first phase is very light. I mean, the Commission is always you know, criticized for, for a lot of paper, but what we ask you is to spend a weekend to write 10 pages to explain to us what kind of business case you want us to fund. And then you get, within three or four months, uh, you get up to uh, 50,000 euro to get to a full business plan, which is the phase two, uh, basically, and, and, and the first, let's say, prototyping or initial phase of the actual implementation. So 50,000 euro, 10 pages, four months to attend, only 10% success rates. But of course, you have to see at the average quality of people who apply. So you have to be serious, of course, um, candidates. Second phase, it's quite, quite nice. Uh, it's a, if you succeed the first phase, you have high chances to succeed the second phase. If you proceed to the second phase, if you see the success rate is quite high, uh, and you can get uh, from one to two, 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 two and a half million. So please have a look at this opportunity. We need better candidates. I think the, 
The, the average quality was quite disappointing the first time. It's an open, a call which is open permanently for the next year, or up to the end of next year. There are cut-off dates, so that you are evaluated or selected at the dates uh, three times, four times a, a year, as you can see. Um, so when I say three months, that's, that's why also you have this delay, because, uh, of course, since the evaluations have, are not really online, but almost, there is a delay building. And finally, I give you, this is my last slide, a glimpse of what we want to do beyond 15, so 16, 17. Uh, IoT will become subject to approval. We still ha need to have the various committees' approval in, uh, with the member states, but IoT will be a so-called focus area. What does it mean? It's a very formal setup in the Commission. That means that it gets its own funding, um, and it's really cross-cutting, which means that not only ICT, but even health research could be involved. I mean, there is, of course, it would be ICT-centric, but it, it's easier to manage the money across departments, which is not maybe important for you, but for us it's important, because in large organizations you have always fights, internal fights and delays. So the fact that the budget will be uh, stable and, and uh, officially managed as a cross-cutting will be an advance. And how are we going to do that? by spending half of it, if it's 160 million, for example, that's what we are working on at the time, 50%, 80 million will be to finance uh, deployment, about five projects of 20 million, for example. Uh, that's what we, so a bit less than 20 million uh, per pilot project. The rest, 50 will be for still for the classical research, software platforms and so on, and 30, uh, 20 million for 20%, uh, excuse me, it's 20%, it's more than 20 uh, million, huh? it's 20% uh, of 160 million, so uh, it's 30 to 40 million, will be for uh, support activity, so su helping to set up the deployment uh, pilots, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, here you have the candidate topics for this large, as we discussed them internally, but it will be subject to discussion with constituencies and so on. You have among the first bullets there, uh, some of the candidates for the first five pilots that we are discussing internally. So I stop here. You have the reference if you look at my slides so that will be online, I suppose. And I just wish that uh, maybe in the room there is the next Steve Job of IoT. <laughs> then remind me that I, was, I have seen you today. Thank you very much. Enjoy the conference.